This is track five. <laughs> Securing MMOs. Um, so full disclosure, you've probably read in your programs that I'm a Bioware Mythic employee. That is no longer true. Uh, I've been advised to say only that uh, in order to give a more complete version of this presentation, uh, I've altered my employment status. So, uh, so um, I've worked in the security industry for quite a while, and um, hey, it's actually working awesome uh, for quite a few years, and have gotten some pretty useful experience. Took that, parlayed that into a job application, and uh, don't even start <laughs> a job application at Bioware Mythic. Um, brought some unique skills to the table to a game industry uh, type company that really was focused more on math and <laughs> dying a fire. You know what? Uh, so a lot of these people right here are, uh, I'll say acquaintances because they are not friends. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I apologize as I interrupt my talk to flip people off back and that sort of thing. So, um, so I have been uh, spending a couple of years writing, um, Subversive software is uh, the term I like to use. It's uh, not malware. Don't worry, you don't have it on your computer. I'm not reading your email except for yours. Um, I've written, and I should say, I've helped write static analysis tools um, at a product company, that sort of thing. So uh, when I was at Bioware, I was a senior software engineer. To give you scope on what a senior is there, since that word gets overused, is um, there were 10 to 15 of us at a 150 person company, about half of which was engineering when I started and uh, a slightly smaller company when I departed. Um, I've written some other tools for other games, Eve, uh, Warcraft, that sort of thing, um, and most notably have been here uh, for four years running Capture the Flag before DD Tech took over. So, uh, and a lot of these jackasses up front helped out in that in one way or another. I don't know this guy, but I'm sure he's okay. <laughs> he's not, okay. So, um, so what's in this talk? Uh, some thoughts on what it's like to go from a job that most of you are probably f pretty familiar with in, and what it's actually like in the game industry. Um, obviously I left, so it couldn't have been that awesome. Um, stories on how bad security really is in pretty much every other field but especially in the games industry where it's exposed and a lot of people actually interact. Um, you, get to, you get a little bit more insight. Uh, some examples of some hacks and other tools people that, uh, that people have written including the ones I've written and uh, some other, some pretty ridiculously terrible ones that we've encountered uh, at Bioware. Uh, and then some thoughts on how it can get better and why there's no chance in hell they're actually going to do anything I say. Um, besides the fact that uh, I'm a giant asshole. What's not in this talk, I'm, I did not bring any, bring any O'Day for any of the games that, uh, enough. <laughs> I did not bring any O'Day for any of the games currently being published. Um, I do not have a release date for Star Wars The Old Republic, don't ask. Nobody does. Um, I didn't include any crappy clip art, just this one thing on the right here. And uh, there are no shout outs in this presentation. I think that's overdone. So, uh, I mean, we can go ahead and get started and talk about actually making the jump. Uh, getting into the games industry worked out best because, like any other job, I knew a guy. Um, alternate slide title. Uh, how I learned to love the shorts. Um, it was actually very disorienting to show up to an interview in a suit uh, and be greeted by the CTO wearing flip flops and shorts. Uh, it's a very, very different. Uh, mindset, that's for sure, uh, even when they were dealing with customers. Um, in the security industry, you look especially bad when you write code that crashes or has vulnerabilities in it. Um, that's not really an, uh, an issue as anybody who's ever run any sort of desktop PC game and it constantly crashes underneath them, they're, they're not suffering because their game crashed when you, you know, uh, do the specific uh, key sequence or whatever. Um, so when we're constantly CYAing and ensuring quality, you're, you're, I've moved into a world at this point where crashes are a matter of course, things go really, really terrible, somebody might actually say sorry. Um, I think there was a time at, at uh, which Blizzard would give free time for extended absences and that just isn't the case anymore. It's, there's no recourse as a customer. And then from a, will, a world of kilobytes to gigabytes. Um, 
when you're writing uh, shell code, when you're writing small clandestine applications, you're worried about every byte, every kilobyte. And this this quote down here was like a realization that I had. No matter how much code you write, you could write for years, your binary will still be smaller than the intro video that took like three months to render. So it's uh it's very different considerations um, and a very different coding style of results. Um, a little bit more uh, lackadaisical one. And another uh, neat little statistic is um, after getting stood up the first day, it's like okay, let's build the project and go get lunch because uh, it took about an hour to build. And the last link step, so every time you just made one little change, that's okay. It did incremental compilation. You still had to wait five minutes for it to link. So it was a a really a big jump for uh, and very disorienting for me. Um, so what was expected out of some of the applications that were being written at BioWare and MMOs? Uh, 4,000 users per shard. So a shard is what you think of as like a realm um, or a uh, world in uh, Warcraft or something like that. Um, and it was expected that the server would introduce no more than 100 milliseconds of latency. Um, we could also give a whole talk on the network infrastructure behind a game like this, which is just uh, unparalleled. It's, it's fantastic. They're like they could actually start their own ISP in uh, in their colos. It's crazy. Um, so each user is spamming dozens of commands. You know, they're they're moving around, they're issuing uh, combat commands, that sort of thing, and all of these have to be very responsive because nobody actually wants to lose. And if they do lose, they well, I, I suspect many people do want to blame it on the client, but we don't want them to continue to blame it on the client in, in a public forum, right? And uh, four hertz. Uh, so that means every 250 milliseconds, uh, a, the whole set of commands are batched and processed. Um, so what this means is that any two people doing something within the same quarter second actually are effectively doing it simultaneously. Um, and low speed. This isn't talking about the server. This is talking about the people. Um, you've all, I'm sure, if you're interested in video games at all, have heard the, of the crunch period where you know six months a year, sometimes 18 months, of people working around the clock. Um, it's my theory that that happens because they're slacking off the rest of the time. There's there's a lot of YouTube in video game companies. There's a lot of Hulu now. Um, and there's also a much greater tendency for formal education, especially CS and hard math. Whereas in our field, you, you're able to kind of get away with it because there's no such thing or there wasn't such a thing as a degree program for ownage 10 years ago. So what makes security difficult in an MMO? Uh, imagine, if you will, an Apache web server. Um, we can assume that They've based, they implemented it based on an RFP that was reviewed by dozens of people battling back and forth, uh, defining how things are spelled and uh, what tokens terminate and that sort of thing. And it takes months or years for a revision of a formal protocol like HTTP to be revised and then finally accepted and then even longer for it to be implemented. Um, many of these users, you can actually have some sort of compensating control of. Uh, authentication in front of it, VPN, that sort of thing. Who cares if there's a giant uh, pre-auth vulnerability if nobody can even get to the system to exploit it? Um, insider attack, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some are open source and benefit from constant peer review. Um, people are testing new static analysis tools on open source projects, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of attention being paid to security in open source tools. Uh, that's not to say open source tools are secure. We can talk about that later if you're interested. Uh, so in the games industry, we define a spec as we go. Uh, some producer or designer um, seemingly on random whims, I'm pretty sure they're like throwing darts or tossing dice somewhere, decide what feature goes in this week, what feature comes out, oh we're not going to do that anymore, never mind, got all the supporting code you did for that, code ends up staying around. Uh, things change scope. Right? Uh, oh, well, uh, we need to be able to have a hotbar for 10 commands. Um, oh, also, now it needs to be 40 commands, and now it needs to be 140 commands. Actually, you know what? Can you just make it user modifiable and scriptable? It's, it's not the same. Like, it's, uh, things are constantly shifting, right? We'll give a connection out to anyone that asks. Anybody with a credit card can show up and connect to our server. That's a, that's a big deal. And then, uh, as games age and they begin doing free trials, we'll give them out for free 
sure you can have a hundred accounts, whatever. Um, we closely guard our code. Um, you, there's kind of a uh, treatment of IP as the most precious thing in an MMO because it really is what the whole company is built on. And so all of these combined make our lives a whole lot more difficult. Um, each one may not be so terrible if it wasn't for all the others. Um, so as we evolve as game players and as game developers, we, intent, we tend to include more. We do everything that was already done up to that point and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. So each uh, successive online game or even video game just pushes the edge just a little bit further or it tries to if it intends to be successful. Um, so the more sophisticated games breed complexity, they breed more sophisticated hacks and more sophisticated hackers. Um, other people have cut their teeth on earlier tools and that sort of thing. I, I'm also fond of hackers. I'm, I'm glad we share something in common. This is great. I feel, I feel like we're connecting. This is good. So uh, client side security is always a losing battle, right? Um, but it's fun. Uh, defense blows, but when you start to turn it into a game of offense, it can be a lot of fun. Um, and I'm gonna, I have some pretty cool stories about that. Uh, and a market for in game currency, gold sellers, means that there is incentive for fraud, for cheating, for doing things you shouldn't be able to do, including duping items, that sort of thing. So, uh, so why do people cheat? Uh, the most common is to win, right? Except that um, those people tend to be small scale, not terribly destructive, whereas. RMT, real money transfer, uh, sale of in-game currency. Uh, there's real world money at stake here. People pull dirty tricks and try everything they can. And often they're in nation states that perhaps we don't have an, uh, some sort of extradition treaty with or really don't give a shit about enforcing US uh, cybercrime laws. Um, other people prefer to cheat for griefing a captive audience. Um, people love their video game and cry extra sweet tears when they've been griefed in that particular video game. Um, some people like to get an edge, like I said, they like to win. And then uh, some people, like myself, I'm sure some recreational type guys in here, um, you own it because it's fun. Uh, you're done playing the game, you're, now you're going to beat it in a different way, right? So you're going to write automation tools, you're going to write cheats or whatever. Um, yeah. That's, uh, that doesn't tend to bother developers because they're uh, mostly doing things for curiosity. It's only when you start selling or widely distributing a tool that it really starts to show up on their radar. Uh, make no mistake though, they actually know when you are developing one. Uh, security in the gaming industry is extremely new. Um, just like uh, I'm sure a lot of you have growing pains, uh, you know, the financial industry was the first one to really kind of jump on board years ago and now games are finally, finally getting into it as they realize that it actually can affect their bottom line. It's not just an annoyance of cheaters, right? Um, and sadly, everyone's heard the term buffer overflow. Everyone's heard integer overrun, but uh, few people actually know how to prevent it in practice. Oh, if I know what vulnerable code is, then certainly I can prevent it from being written, right? We don't write vulnerabilities, we're professionals. I write this for a living, I've been doing this for 15 years, and to which I reply, yeah, I found the same bug 15 years ago. Also, whoever's attacking me right now, that's dirty bullshit because I can't hit B with my ninja badge. Dirk Tangent, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, so knowledge of vulnerabilities isn't the same as being able to spot them in your own code and especially not in the code of others. Um, nobody wants to hear that they write code less secure than IE, right? Everyone trashes the browser and oh my god, that thing's a pile of shit. I can't believe it crashed when I went to Disney.com. Why are we going to Disney.com? That's not important. It crashed. And uh, nobody wants to hear that if somebody was doing so something equally malicious to your application that it would fall over. Uh, the one thing they have going for them is that blind exploitation is virtually impossible. Um, so they really have to worry about some sort of insider. But taking things down, very, uh, very trivial. And the one thing I will say for the games industry, at least they don't say cyber without meaning chat sex. That is bullshit. Stop doing it. We can, we can fight this together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> down with cyber as a single word. Okay. So what are some of the techniques and types of things that people do to cheat? Blind scripting. This is things like uh, writing a script to 